Hey, what's up, my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone Jones here. Hey, I want to talk a little bit about something I get asked about all the time. And this is dealing with um, how to get your contractor's license without taking the exam, right? There's a lot of individuals that would like to have the contractor's license, but may not be in a position to obtain a contractor's license for whatever reason. There's so many reasons out there. Now, before I get into about this, uh, the process of an RMO and an RME, let's talk about who used, who, who, who was the first to use this type of service that's available uh, to contractors. Um, let me give you this example. Say there was a company out of, out of New York. And say that company out of New York was a $30 million company. And that company wanted to expand to California. Um, do you think that that owner of that $30 million company is going to sign up with a contractor school, purchase the prep material, study, sign up for the exam and have time to go and take the exam in order to allow his company to properly illegally contract in the state of California. No, that company is actually going to hire an RMO. <clears throat> that RMO is going to allow that New York corporation to be able to perform legally as a contractor in California. That's who was normally using this process. Now we have downsized it to actually fit us on a smaller scale to be able to utilize this opportunity. Now I bring that up because this opportunity can be used by the person with the license who we call the RMO or the RME, or an individuals that's looking to get their license that needs an RMO or RME. Now, there's risk in this all the way around for both parties, especially for the RMO slash RME side, okay? But in this construction industry, there's risk all the way around is no different than running your own construction company and dealing with the same amount or same level of risk, okay? Um, there are pros and cons to be doing this and not everyone is a fan of it, but I just feel that a lot of people that's not a fan of it, which is a lot of all knows, really don't understand the process, okay? So let me break down a process here at the Construction Entrepreneurial School. It may be different with some other companies that offer this service, okay? There's not a lot of us out there, but I do a select amount of applicants uh, here at the Construction Entrepreneurial School Services, okay? <clears throat> All right, so to become an RMO or RME, the RMO stands for Responsible Managing Officer. And RME stands for Responsible Managing Employee. The difference between the two is one is designated with one company and the other can be designated to, with up to four companies. So as a Responsible Managing Officer, the RMO, you can actually be tied to four different companies. So what that means for a person that has a license. So if you actually have a license you are actually an RMO. Um, if you have a license and you're, you're not tied to one company, you're actually already an RMO. You are an RMO, okay? That means that that one company that you have, whether that's a sole prop or corporation, LLC, partnership, whatever it is, you're actually allowed to open up three different companies with three different license numbers. But those companies have to fall under the whatever classification you have. Okay. Now you can you can take as many classifications as you want. Maybe that's another video. But let's say you only have one classification. Okay, HVAC. That means that you can open up 
three other HVAC companies and they each will have separate numbers. Okay, so you're, you're given a total of four slots. Okay, what I suggest with this ARMO process is that you're only going to use this one. You leave that, you operate with that. The other three, you open up three separate companies that will pay you. You won't have a percentage of them. I don't arrange percentages of those companies unless it's a special occasion. I just arrange that you get paid from these companies on a monthly basis. These are slots that you're not using. Okay. All right. So now with those four companies, that, that first company can be a sole prop, right? Doesn't have to be a corporation. But when these other companies are in operation or when they get opened up, they act, they actually, the board requires them to be a corporation. Okay, so whatever it's an S Corp, C Corp, LLC, whatever it is, it has to be a corporation. It cannot be a sole prop. Okay, so the first thing, because it has to be a corporation, the first thing we're looking for is the individual that wants to have an RMO onto their company to allow the company to do construction work must have a corporation set up. Okay. Now, when you set up that corporation, you set up that corporation as if it's your own. You put your own officers, um, decide your own name, um, you know, you decide what address you put on there. This is your company, okay? Next, we find the arm O to allow that company to, to legally do construction work, okay? Once we find that RMO or that RME, remember, the difference between RMO and RME, one can have four, and one can be tied to one. The RME can be tied to one, RMO can be tied to four. Once we find the RMO or the RME to be matched with your company, that means that we find one and we meet, we make sure it's a good fit. We may have one, we may have two meetings, depending on how things are arranged or how things go or what type of time we, we have with each individual to get to know each other. It's a short period of time, okay? So basically we can arrange, I, we've done up to five meetings, okay? Face-to-face -face meetings, Zoom calls, uh, different types of meetings, but we get to know each other with a, in, in this short time, okay? With, you feel like if it's a match, basically it's on a gut feeling, Okay, if this is a match, then we, um, we, um, we, if it's a match, then we figure out what is a monthly payment. Okay, if this, if we can work out the monthly payment, what we decide now, normally here at the Construction Entrepreneur School, our monthly payment is $1,200. Okay, um, and at, at the time of this video, at the time of this video, which is uh, September 2020, our payment, our, our fee is $1,200, okay? Now this goes for the RMO as well as the person looking to have an RMO, okay? Our fee is laid out like this, 800 goes to the RMO and 400 goes to the school, okay? While us collecting the 400, we have a certain amount that, um, that we, that, that we, um, we require, um, we require it to be paid so we can actually make sure that both parties are protected. We require um, the RMO to send in a certain amount of reports on a weekly basis. Um, we inform, um, we require the person renting to return the reports that we can submit to the RMO on a weekly basis. Um, we make sure that um, all your information is protected and in the correct places to where we're notified if there's any issues. And we also uh, take the proper precautions on both ends, whether we need to uh, disassociate, resolve an issue, figure out duties. Um, uh, and this will all be laid out in the agreement and all three parties will be signing this agreement. 
Okay. So when I say figure out the monthly pay, it may be a different amount. Um, like this last deal that we did, it was actually a percentage amount. So it, it is different amounts, different ways. Everyone operate differently. Everyone has a certain amount of work coming in or in a different sector or line of work. Um, so it, it, that that percentage that that that's really all that amount is based on uh, 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 what is agreed upon by all parties. And uh, and those parties that deciding that pay is mainly uh, the higher percentage goes with the RMO to agree on what the select pay really is. Okay, and then we'll take a portion of that as a school, a percentage of it. Okay. Um, once that fit is made, that monthly amount is agreed upon, and we all agree, then we come up with the agreement. Agreements and duties are sent out. Figure out who's doing what. Uh, is the RMO part of the uh, part of the operation? We'll be doing inspections and looking at work for you, managing for you, or not. Okay. Uh, those duties are different than duties of just regular checkups. Okay. Regular checkups on the operation, regular checkup on the office, regular checkup on jobs, that's different than having duties to help the operation. Okay. Um, all agreements goes out. Everyone reads the agreement. If you have revisions, you send those back in. We re revise the agreement if need be. Then all parties sign the agreement. At that point, if you don't have a corporation, at that point, a corporation by the person that's needing the RMO will commit. If you have not, if you if you did not come into this agreement with a corporation, you will now start getting a um, a corporation. Um, also, to a fee of about two hundred and thirty dollars will be paid. That's non-refundable. Okay, um, so at this point the ball is in your court you need to get your corporation we can help you get your corporation as a school um, um, that is a separate fee it's not included with this RMO service we can help you uh, get you get your corporation started for a uh, a discounted fee not a problem uh, but you will need to get your corporation started once you have your corporation started and you have received your corporate number, you will send that in to us, and then we will start the CSFB application process. Once we fill out the CSFB application process and we get all parties' information on that application, we send in that application. Okay. Um, uh, once we send an application, uh, then the, the, the process starts with obtaining all the information we need that's requested by the CSLB. A bond will be requested. Okay. Now that bond is going to pertain to uh, the contractor's bond and or the RMO bond. Now, the reason why we pull a bond for the RMO is so the RMO doesn't own a percentage of the corporation. If we don't have a bond for the RMO, then the RMO automatically owns 20% of your corporation. Let's understand that. Okay. So we pull a bond out for the RMO. That way the RMO stands separately from your corporation and RMO is solely there to allow your company to work construction. Now, at this point, what we have is, is we have a, 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 an agreement that's signed. We actually have an application that's submitted to the state board and it basically says this RMO is allowing this company which you have filed, you're the only one on, you can pull a bank account, you can pull insurances, you're totally responsible for that. Uh, but this arm allows this company to operate as a construction company, okay? You obtain the bonding, you obtain insurances, everything that's required for you to be in operation is all on the person that's renting the license that has the arm on, okay? You cover all those fees. You cover the application fee, the bond fee, everything that's required after that point is all on you, okay? We talk about the total cost of it. We discuss that with you. You will know upfront on what you have to pay, okay? 
Uh, you once the application gets accepted, you receive your contractor's license. You're ready to roll. You obtain your necessary insurances based on the work that you're doing, and you're done. Okay, now you can start contracting. The great thing about rolling with our school, uh, uh, with this RMO Army process, is that as a contractor, I understand that uh, a lot of times we may need the running room to get started off. And then having a you know a twelve hundred dollar fee on your back every month starting out may not be the greatest thing, may not be the greatest starting point. So we work that out in the agreement. Okay. We, 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 we talk about it, we figure out what the best option is. We may reduce that for three months. We may add that in on the back end. We may uh, split that off uh, and, and, and then even it out through the remainder of, of the agreement, you know, the remaining months of the agreement. We work things out, you know, also too, as a school, because we have tools readily available, classes, courses, and, and we're involved in this contract too. So we want to see you be successful, okay? That means that you need help with estimating projects, we're here to help. If you need help with finding the projects to bid on, we're here to help. If you need help understanding your labor burden costs, we need help. Building rates, building labor rates, uh, going after public works projects, we're here to help. We're here to help you be successful because we're involved as well. So you get all those added benefits that we offer as a school along with this service so we can help you be successful and we can be successful as well, okay? Um, uh, so it, it turns out to be, as long as both parties are doing their part, it, it turns out to be a great short-term benefit opportunity for all parties, okay? This is not a long-term, okay? Uh, the max time I suggest someone do this is four to five years. After four years, you qualify to get your own license. Whoever is on that license now qualifies to actually get their own license, okay? The reason why I say four to five years is because after four years, it may take some time to actually file for the application and get that process started. But this should be a short time. This should be a short-lived opportunity. Sometimes it's a long um, uh, opportunity, which is great. Um, uh, it can go on for a long time, as long as all parties is in agreement with it, and it can work out. But that's the gist of the RMO, RME process here at the Construction Entrepreneur School of Services. So I wanted to touch on that because I get a lot of questions about that. A lot of questions about you know, do we have B licenses and, and different other licenses available. Um, it's very hard to come uh, come about uh, someone that uh, wants to uh, be an RMO. Uh, majority of the license classifications we get are B license classification, general B license classification. Rarely do we get any of the specialty license like the HVAC, the concrete, the framing, um, um, uh, the paving, grading, things like that. We rarely get those classifications. I wish times change and we do get more in. Hopefully that happens soon. But right now, the majority of all modes we're getting in is B licenses. We already get the A licenses. Uh, those fall in line with uh, the same with the C classifications. Same with the, uh, the C61 D classifications. We rarely get any of those. In. So mainly it's the B classification. Uh, but anytime we do get any specialty license, we will make sure we contact the people that's on the waiting list to get uh, all signed up, get the agreement, meet their RMO, and get rocking and rolling as soon as possible. Uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave the comments. Leave the comments below. Uh, ask questions. Uh, this is a serious thing. This is not illegal. This is illegal. Uh, all of it illegal. This is acceptable by the board. There's just certain guidelines that we have to follow, uh, certain applications that we have to submit, certain assurances we need to have make sure we stay in compliance. And we're here to help you do that on both parties, as an RMO and as someone that's needing an RMO. So check our website uh, and, and make sure you subscribe, like, follow, uh, and share this video with anyone that needs to see it. Also too, we just launched 
some videos, some courses on our website that you need to check out. There's going to be a link down there before. We have one where um, um, you're learning how to build labor rates. I'm going to pull one up here. You're actually learning how to build labor rates. And the course is going for, it's right here on our homepage. You scroll to the bottom here. Okay. Scroll to the bottom here. Uh, that's our t shirt there. You can go see that. Scroll to the bottom here. We got one there. Uh, we got some more courses here. Look at this one. This course here. 499, understanding your construction company overhead. Okay. We teach you in that in that in that course there. Uh, that course is for four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay, everybody is picking up this course. You're learning uh, how to build your overhead as a new company. Your overhead rate fluctuates. Okay, it goes up and down, depending on where you're at, what you're doing, how much work you have coming in. But once you understand your overhead, and I don't care if you're unlicensed, licensed, you need to take this course. Okay, it's not going to be forty nine. It's not going to be four dollars and ninety nine cents forever. Okay, but it's on our homepage. Check in the product sheet if you don't see it on our. Check in the product link if you don't see our homepage. Also, it will be down in the description. Once you learn your overhead rate, it will tell you the, the the amount of work or sales that you need to go after. You know based on the salary amounts that you put in, based on all the overhead that you put in, right? This is uh, uh, indirect costs, things that you cannot or should not be charging to any particular job. That's what goes into your overhead. It'll tell you what percentage that you need to add to each estimate to make sure that overhead cost is covered. On every estimate, that overhead cost needs to be covered, okay? I give examples on what goes into the overhead you will receive the Excel sheet so you can actually build your own overhead rate. And you will learn that, hey, I'm in sales for this month. I need um, hundred. I need to land $150,000 worth of work so I can cover my sales. I can cover my overhead for this month. You will learn that. And that is so vital in having a construction, a successful construction company check that video out we just released it we just had we just put it up on the uh, on the website it's for 499 make sure you check it out when this sale is over this price is going in okay with that my construction entrepreneurs i'm gonna let you go remember hustle hard then hustle harder catch you guys on the next one thanks for watching